Hello, hello, everyone! Welcome back to More Than Music with Mrs. Bell. Today, we're switching gears and focusing on being peaceful. We will do some deep breathing to create a peaceful environment in and around us, read about a journey of peace, and then sing a little at the end. So find a comfortable seating position on the floor or sit on the edge of a chair with your back straight and plant both feet on the ground. We're gonna start with a few rounds of breath. Breathe in for four beats through your nose and exhale for eight beats through your mouth. So here we go. One, two, ready and in. Two, three, four and out. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight and in. Two, three, four and out. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight and in. Two, three, four, out. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and in. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and in. Two, three, four, and out. Two, three, four, five, six, last one, and in. Two, three, four, and out. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now that we've created our place of peace around us, let's journey with Hiawatha and the Peacemaker and find out how this story is going to unfold. Let's start by taking note of a few key moments in part one. Hiawatha's entire family had been killed in battle by the evil chief Tadadaho. Hiawatha covered his wounds with leaves that he had gathered from the bush, meaning he used nature around him to help heal his body. But inside, he was taken over by anger and a restless mind, and he could only think of revenge. And revenge is doing something hurtful back to someone because of something hurtful that they did to you. We meet the peacemaker as he mysteriously floats in on a white stone canoe. A heavy stone does not float on water, and this large white stone canoe was very mysteriously doing so. The peacemaker brings a message of healing and shares the great law of peace. Hiawatha didn't believe the peacemaker's words were true and had never thought that peace among the tribes was a possibility. The peacemaker tells Hiawatha that his voice is quiet and his words are difficult to understand and he asks Hiawatha to carry the message to the tribes. And so Hiawatha agrees to help the peacemaker carry the message. I stared at his stone canoe, bewildered by its ability to float. But we paddled off, and with every impossible moment that the canoe glided across the water, I became more of a believer. When we arrived at the land of my people, the Mohawk, we were greeted warmly. The chief and the elders were summoned and we gathered in a circle. A few clan mothers looked on with curiosity and concern. The peacemaker closed his eyes and placed his hand on my back. Somehow, he had the power to move his message through me. I began to speak his words. Peace, power and righteousness shall be the new way, I said. We must join together. All nations will become one family. Our people shall have one body, one mind, and one heart. This is the message of the great law. The clan mothers nodded in agreement, and a sense of relief spread over me. But then the war chief spoke. We respect your message, but we cannot join you, he said. How can we know if your words are true? Tadadaho is too strong, too violent. Our people must be prepared to fight. The peacemaker quietly stuttered. The great law is more powerful than any one man. We will return with proof that our nations can join together. As the peacemaker and I traveled toward the land of the Cayuga, He spoke to me of healing through forgiveness. My mind still filled with hatred and my heart still filled with the pain of my loss could not comprehend this. 
When we arrived, we learned that the Kaluga tribe had been devastated in an attack by Tadaho and his warriors. My mind was flooded with the images of the battle that had taken my family. Rage filled my body. I turned to the peacemaker and yelled, We will never be free! In an attempt to soothe me, the peacemaker asked me to sit with him and the Cayuga Council. He looked deep into my eyes as he spoke to the people. I do not see defeat, he said. What I see is a passage, a passage to a new way of life. Join me and together we can spread peace rather than war, love rather than hate, unity rather than fear. The peacemaker placed his fist over his heart. A feeling of strength and trust ran down my spine. And with new hope, we headed toward the great hill to see the Seneca people. The Cayuga chief followed us in his canoe. Together, we paddled as one nation. We were met by 15 armed braves. For the first time, the peacemaker showed signs of worry. We were surrounded by warriors and led to the center of the Seneca village. The Seneca chief approached the circle and the gods closed in on us. With the wave of his hand, the warriors lifted their spears. But then he nodded and the gods drove their spears deep into the dirt. The Seneca chief sat down and told us that the wind had carried our message from the land of the Cayuga. And the Seneca people wanted to learn about the peacemaker and the great law. We will all perish if we continue this violence. A change must come and the time is now. Alone we will be broken, I said. But together we are more powerful than the greatest warrior. The Seneca chief trailed us in his canoe and together we rode as two nations. Guided by the moon, we trekked through the forest to the land of the Oneida people. We were halfway to the camp when the snap of a stick was heard through the trees. Suddenly the earth beneath our feet gave way and we hit ground and were then engulfed by a giant net. The Oneida chief stood towering over us. I've spared your life, he declared. Why would two chiefs and two strangers be so foolish as to enter our territory in the darkness? His men dragged us through the dirt and bound our hands. The peacemaker explained that we had joined the Cayuga and the Seneca nations in the name of peace, but his words had no power with the Oneida. Then the peacemaker turned to me and said, Tell your story, Hiawatha. Tell us of your great loss. I spoke of my pain and of my hatred for Tadadaho. I told the Oneida that my wife and three daughters had been killed by the violent world we had created. But as I spoke, I felt something come over me. Forgiveness. I had not been able to save my family but on this journey, I had been able to forgive myself. I began to understand the meaning of the great law. And I turned to the peacemaker and placed my fist over my heart. And with a knowing nod, he smiled. A warrior approached and he untied all of us one by one. Rather than feel the anger that had consumed me, I now remember the joy of my family. I was joined by the Cayuga chief, the Seneca chief, the peacemaker, and lastly, the Oneida chief. Together, we traveled as three nations. The next thing that we're gonna do, we're gonna get right back into this is me. I don't know about you, but I feel very peaceful after that um, peaceful breathing moment and then also just um, getting into the story of Hiawatha and the Peacemaker um, I'm just feeling very very peaceful I am peaceful so say it with me I am peaceful this is me second verse 
Another round of bullets hits my skin. Another round of bullets hits my skin. Well, fire away, cause today I won't let the shame sink in. Well, fire away, cause today I won't let the shame sink in. We are bursting through the barricades and reaching for the sun. And we are bursting through the barricades and reaching for the sun. And then you are gonna hear, we are warriors. Yeah, that's what we become. We are warriors. Yeah, that's what we become. Continue. I won't let them break me down to dust. I know that there's a place for us. For we are glorious. For we are glorious. Let's go ahead and just sing it together from the top. This is me. I am peace. Is me. Look up, cause here I come. 